Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 58. This three-part video series will show you how to create a Sudoku puzzle from scratch. Throughout this video series, we will be using the Hudoku software for creating our puzzles. You may want to watch DX Sudoku video number 49 titled Hudoku User's Guide as a prerequisite. We will also be using Microsoft MS Paint and Notepad, and we just assume the viewer has a basic knowledge of these programs. Part 1, Seed Creation, is about creating a starting point solution needed for creating a puzzle from scratch. In addition to basic seed creation, Part 1 will show different tactics for creating different solution grids using the same solution path. Part 2, Puzzle Creation, will show you how to create a puzzle from a solution grid or seed solution. More importantly, you will be able to create different solution paths using the same solution grid. In part three, special topics, a process for creating new puzzles from existing puzzles will be demonstrated. And how to find a solution path for a predefined given pattern will be discussed. Welcome again, as you are about to explore the arcane world of Sudoku puzzle creation. When creating a Sudoku puzzle from scratch, we will start with a seed solution. In this first section of video, we will use Hudoku to create a basic seed solution in seconds. Here we are showing Hudoku after the program has been launched. We select the hard difficulty level for no reason other than I always pick this one out of habit. We click on the create new puzzle icon to generate a new puzzle having Hudoku's hard difficulty level. From the view drop-down menu, we select the solution path menu item. We scroll down to the bottom of the solution path window. We right-click over the last step and select solve all before from the pop-up menu. Next, we click on the execute button to finish the last step. We have our first seed solution for creating new puzzles. From the file drop-down menu, we select save puzzle as menu item. We enter seed1 as the file name and we click on the save button. Now you could try to create a Sudoku solution on your own, but this is very time consuming. We are simply using Hudoku to generate our seed solution. Next, scroll the solution path window back to the top. Right click over the first step and select delete from here from the pop-up menu. Then from the file drop-down menu, select the save puzzle as menu command. We save the puzzle as P1 and then click on the save button. Next from the view drop-down menu, we select the summary command. This P1 puzzle has a difficulty score of 1,104. It uses two lock candidates, one naked pair, one X-wing, one swordfish, one two-string kite, and one W-wing in its solution. We need to keep this 1104 number and technique list in mind for the next few examples. Using our P1 puzzle as a starting point, we are going to show you how to create new solution grids or seed puzzles. It's probably not polite to take someone else's puzzle and use it as our seed puzzle, but there are a sextillion number of solvable Sudoku puzzles in the Sudoku universe. Surely there has to be one or two we can use as a seed solution without any copyright issues. But just to be sure, we will show you several techniques for creating a derivative Sudoku solution. Derivatizing a Sudoku puzzle is the process of modifying the puzzle so the original is no longer recognizable. Derivatizing is a good way of preventing any issues with regards to copyrights or hurting other people's feelings. Puzzles that are derived can be considered derivative art. The next few slides we will show you several tactics for derivatizing your original seed puzzle. Derivatizing tactic number one. With this tactic we will exchange sets of 3x3 three three blocks creating a new solvable puzzle in the process. Click on the Hudoku program title bar so it has the focus. Then hold the Alt key down and touch on the Print Screen key. We now have a bitmap image of the Hudoku program with the current puzzle in the clipboard. Next, we launch the MS Paint program. We now have MS Paint and Hudoku side by side. From the clipboard drop down menu, we select the Paste command. We now have a bitmap image of Hudoku and our P1 puzzle in MS Paint. From the image drop down menu, we select the Select command. We select blocks 2, 5, and 8, or columns 3, 4, 5, now showing a dashed rubber band line around them. From the clipboard drop-down menu, we select the cut command. We now have an image of blocks 2, 5, and 8 in our clipboard. From the image drop-down menu, we select the select command. 
We select blocks 3, 6, 9 with the selection tool. We position the mouse over our selection and hold the left mouse button down. We drag our selection to the left so it becomes columns 3, 4, and 5. Next from the clipboard drop down menu, we select the paste command. We position our mouse over the pasted blocks. We hold the left mouse button down and we drag the blocks to the right and position them so they can become columns 7, 8, and 9. From Hodoku's file drop down menu, we select the new givens command. We click on the Yes button to continue. We are now going to enter all the givens from the puzzle we created in MS Paint. All the givens we need to enter in Hadoku are now circled in red. We double click on each of the circled numbers. We verify the values set are in the correct locations. We launch another instance of Hadoku and load the original P1 puzzle. We are now showing the P1 puzzle on the left and our newly created puzzle on the right. Next, we are going to convert the blue values on the right into puzzle givens. We do this by selecting the copy values command from the edit dropdown menu. We then immediately go back to the edit dropdown menu and select the paste command. As you can see, the blue values on the right have been converted into black givens. But not only that, Hadoku has solved the puzzle and is now showing the summary. Notice how our puzzle has exactly the same difficulty level, 1104, and is using the exact same technique list as our original P1 puzzle. Not only that, but if we look at the solution path window, both puzzles are using the exact same techniques in the exact same order. The only difference is the location of the cells where the techniques apply. Even though the givens are in different locations, it is important to take note both puzzles have the exact same number of givens. When we think a Sudoku puzzle as being unique, we tend to think of it as being really unique. This is not completely the case. In the Sudoku universe, there are classes of puzzles, all sharing some qualifying relationship with each other. In this example, we have two puzzles having the same number of givens in different locations, but both puzzles are using the same sequence of steps for their solution. Normally, when I use this tactic, I do not use MS Paint to reorder the columns. I just have two open Hadoku programs and do the swap by putting the givens in by eyeballing it. There are other sets of switches that will work with this tactic. In our example, we switch columns 4, 5, and 6 with columns 7, 8, and 9. There are two other column choices and three row choices we could also make listed here that will work just as well. The next few tactic examples will not take as long to demonstrate as this first example. With derivatizing tactic number two, we exchange rows or columns in the same 3x3 three three set of shared blocks. Here is our original P1 puzzle on the left. Hadoku is ready to receive new givens on the right. No MS Paint this time, we are just going to eyeball the exchanges. Here is the result. We have exchanged row one with row two. We have exchanged row 4 with row 6, and we have exchanged row 8 with row 9. And much to my surprise, and I'm not sure what it means, but the puzzle on the right is now showing perfect symmetry with the pattern of givens. It looks like we have reversed engineered the source of our P1 puzzle. We may now have an insight into how the puzzle generator was working. We convert the values into givens, and just as before, we have created a puzzle having the same 1104 difficulty level and technique list. We check to see if both puzzles have the same solution path, and they do. With derivatizing tactic number three, we use the image processing capabilities of MS Paint. We get a copy of our puzzle into MS Paint, and we choose one of the five image transformation commands. All five choices will work. We are going to show an example of flipping vertically. Just as before, we get a copy of our puzzle into MS Paint. This time, we choose the flip vertically menu command. We create a new set of givens in Hadoku matching the image in MS Paint. After a while, you get good at reading numbers this way. 8 is pretty easy, but 6 and 9 are tricky. Here is our new puzzle on the right and our original on the left. We convert the values to givens and we get the same 1104 result. With derivatizing tactic number 4, we flip our original puzzle diagonally, or what is called transposing. Just as before, we get a copy of our puzzle into MS Paint. This time, from the image drop-down menu, we choose Rotate to the left 90 degrees, and then we choose the Flip Vertical command. We create a new set of givens in Hadoku matching the image in MS Paint. 
Here is our new puzzle on the right and the original on the left after we converted the values to givens. And again, we get the same 1104 result. The givens in block 5 demonstrate the transpose well. The 4 and 5 stayed the same because they were on the diagonal, but the 2 and 6 exchanged positions. We showed transposing on the falling diagonal. To transpose on the rising diagonal, you would rotate right 90 degrees and then flip vertically. The last derivatizing tactic we will discuss is number remapping. On the right we have our starting puzzle, on the left we have the program notepad running. From Hadoku's edit dropdown menu, we select the copy values command. Then from notepad's edit dropdown menu, we select the paste command. As you can see in notepad, we have an 81 character string representing the puzzle we had in Hadoku. The period character, or dots, means there's no given in that spot. The first nine characters of the string represent the first row in our puzzle. We are now showing another instance of the notepad program positioned just below the first one. Remapping is a two-step process. We first map the numbers to temporary letters, and then we map the temporary letters to their final mapping. In this second notepad program, we are showing our first mapping plan. We are going to map all the 1 characters to the capital A character, and all the 2s will be mapped to the capital B character, and so on. We launch a third instance of Notepad and position it below the second. We copy and paste in our 81 character string. We begin the mapping process. From the Edit drop-down menu, we select the Replace command. We do a global replace of all the 1 characters with the letter capital A. We repeat the global replace for the rest of the mapping. We launch a fourth copy of Notepad and position it below the third. Here is our plan for the second part of the process. We have shifted the numbers down by two. The number one becomes eight, the number two becomes nine, the numbers three, four, five become one, two, and three, and so on. We launch a fifth copy of Notepad, we copy the first mapping result into the editor, and we are now ready to do our final mapping. We pull up the replace dialog box and do a global replace of the letter A with the number eight. We continue for the remaining letters. Our mapping is complete. From the Edit drop-down menu, we copy our final result back into the clipboard. We pull up a new copy of Hadoku and load our original P1 puzzle in it, which is now showing on the left. With the Hadoku on the right, we set it up to receive new givens. From the Edit drop-down menu, we select the Paste command. As you can see, we have our familiar 1104 result. The numbers on the right are in the same positions, but they have been mapped to different numbers. In terms of the Sudoku universe, the remapping of numbers greatly increases the number of puzzle solutions we can create all using the same solution path. We now have two puzzle classes defined over the Sudoku universe. Both classes have the same number of givens as a starting point. The first puzzle class is defined by the solution path. There are a number of different solution grids all using the same solution path for a particular count of givens. Each puzzle has the same number of initial givens, but a different arrangement of the givens at the start. And the second puzzle class is defined by a particular count and arrangement of givens, with each having a particular number mapping. At first you might think there are just 9 mappings, but consider if we map 1 to 9 and 2 to 3 the first time, then we can map 1 to 9 and 2 to 4 the second time, and so on, across all the different possible choices. The total number of mappings is quite large. It is important to know you can apply tactics 1 through 5 repeatedly in many different orders. Mashing up tactics 1 through 5 has huge implications. So there are two questions that come to mind. How many times can the tactics be applied? And what is the total number of puzzles possible all using the same solution path? I am sure there is some mathematical limit on the number of times you can apply the different tactics because at some point the patterns will start repeating.
but it has to be a very large number. It's probably an astronomical sized number with philosophical implications. In this video, we showed you how to create lots of different solution grids, all using the same solution path. All the puzzles we created all used the same number of initial givens each time. In part two of this video series, we will show you how to create many different solution paths, all using the same solution grid. And many times the number of initial givens will be changing as we create different solution paths. This completes DXodoku training video number 58. Please support DXodoku. Thank you for watching.